So here's the big question that I've been getting from a lot of folks. Why are you in Texas? Now I can tell you specifically why I came to Livingston. I don't know if I mentioned it yet or not, but I came here to domicile, become a resident of Texas. Howdy, folks so I hope you enjoyed my little intro there uh, I have never ever camped on the water and that's what we're doing today um, well actually for the next three nights a little bit late so if you've never RV'd or anything like that uh, what they do if you're if you get in after uh, check-in they leave you a packet with all the details like where you're supposed to stay and whatnot. So I'm in site 303. And looks like Yeah, I have no idea how to figure this out. <laughs> so tell you what I'm gonna do here. Uh gonna go ahead and get uh find my site and get settled in and i'll catch up with you later so here's the big question that i've been getting from a lot of folks why are you in Texas? Now, I can tell you specifically why I came to Livingston. I don't know if I mentioned it yet or not, but I came here to domicile, become a resident of Texas. All right, so I'm going to show you how, how I did that. And like, literally, you can do this in a matter of hours. It's incredible. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So I just want to share this while I'm here. The weather's been terrible. Um, and I think that a lot of people might find this interesting. I'm going to try to do this just in a couple of minutes. Just a quick summary. If it, this is something that doesn't intrigue you or interest you, or, and it doesn't matter if it's something you may or may not do. Some people might find it interesting. Some people might find it useful. But you are more than welcome to skip to the next chapter because there's more content following. Um, outside of that, Escapees is in no way sponsoring this video. I am not endorsed by them in any, any way. Just figured I would share. Okay, so Escapees is an RV club, but in such, how did Eddie become a Texan? It's really simple. So, you know, I've sold my home. Um, I don't really have a permanent address. So what I did was, after I became a member, is I got set up with their mail forwarding and mail scanning service. So I actually got a physical address with Escapees in Livingston, Texas. I subscribe to their monthly mail scanning, all that kind of fun stuff. So they, as the mail comes in, they scan it. And I get a push notification from an app, and I can go in and tell them to destroy it, where to forward it to, or just please open it and scan it and send it back to me kind of thing. Very cool. I mean, not to mention that how many benefits the club has as a, as a whole, you know, tire discounts, discount fuel program, uh, job exchange, roadside assistance, the whole nine, discount camping, all kinds of stuff. But that was my most important thing that I needed to accomplish, and then I wanted to, to domicile here. So there's three states that are pretty easy to deal with. That's Texas, Florida, and South Dakota when it comes to it. I chose Texas because I'm here all the time anyway. Um, one of my oldest and closest friends lives here. Only made sense. Um, with that, you know, when you want to become a resident, the first thing you have to do, obviously, you got to have a physical address. So I did that, you know. And, and escapees is cool because they break down the steps. Not in the correct order, but I'll show you that just in case. So then it talks about establishing professional social connections within the county of, you know, of domicile or that you select. So here it's like Polk County. So they give, I'll give you a list of businesses you can work with. In my case, I stuck with my insurance. I just switched to Texas. I changed the address with all of my banks, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. I had everything sent here to that address. Now, once you have all that set up, 
Then you want to get your residency, right? So you need to do get your driver's license. You're going to want to become a voter. You're going to want vehicle registration and inspections. Well, they don't tell you what order. So this can save you a lot of pain if you were to do this. And again, if. But in, how it's supposed to happen is you get your vehicle inspections done. It's $7 a vehicle. Okay, it takes 5 to 10 minutes. When you show up, make sure you have your current insurance for that state. So in this case, it's Texas. Um, they just, I think they're checking things like, you know, your, your turn signals, headlights, brake lights, your brakes, um, uh, window tinting, just all safety stuff. So once that's done, the next step, and it's almost like you're pretty much going backwards on this one, right? The next step is to get your vehicle registration done. So when you get there, you want your current driver's license, your application for registration for each vehicle. So, you know, in my case, I had to fill out two. Okay. Um, in my case, since I have an RV, in this case, specifically a travel trailer, I had to take an exterior photo of it. So you show up with that information uh, along with your current registration. Uh, if you have a title or anything like that, bring the title with. And then you're just going to pay the fee. So you pay your registration fees. Plus, since you're new to the state, you pay a $95 fee per vehicle. That easy. Takes you about 20 minutes. Um, I waited for like five. It was real quick. And then from there, that you get your driver's, uh, your, your plates rather, for the vehicles. You get a sticker for your windshield, the truck, or your car. Um, nothing for the plate, except unless you have a trailer or something you're towing. Then you have a special sticker that goes on it because you're towing a trailer. Um, you can get your voter registration done there. However, you can automatically have it done when you get your driver's license. Now, that's the last step. Again, it seems backwards, but yes, you got to have your vehicles registered before you can get a license here. Since COVID, you also have to make an appointment at the driver's license office. So in this case, it's like it's a, the DPS or Department of Public Safety office in Texas slash driver's license office is what I think it was called. But you want to bring a um, passport if you have it, birth certificate, social security card, copy of your current uh, driver's license from another state. Make sure it's not um, expired. Bring your insurance, bring your new registration, and lastly, fill out the driver's license application, which they do have there. Um, I want to. I tried to do everything online, but I couldn't find that until the last minute, so I just filled it out there and turned it in. So if everything goes all right, uh, you, you pay a, a couple of fees, they take your picture, and they give you a piece of paper. That's your temporary driver's license, and you get your permanent one in you know, two weeks. It was really easy. You could literally wake up in the morning and by noon be a resident of that, that state. That simple. So, and it's completely legit, legal, everything like that. Uh, cool thing is Texas, no income tax. You have to say, that's kind of neat. But a uh, really simple process. So, if this is something that you might use at some point, go to escapees.com and they have the information there on it. And again, they did not sponsor or endorse this video in any way. All right. For that matter, uh, let's get going here because we're getting ready to head to Paris, Texas. Hello, folks. Welcome to Paris, Texas. Got a special treat for you all today. Now, there hasn't been a whole lot to shoot here, and I have been here before, so you know, I'm somewhat reserved. Look at this sunlight. Here we go. So I'm somewhat reserved about, well, what to do, what not to do. Do I repeat stuff? I don't, you know, I don't really like to do repeats like I may go see something if I liked it but I'm not necessarily gonna shoot it if that makes any sense uh, it just really depends but today we're gonna go see something that actually is considered a very popular uh, tourist attraction here in uh, Paris Texas and it is called Jesus wears boots or I digress Jesus wears cowboy boots now I got it right um, well, if I was taking a test, I would have filmed that. But anyway, so yeah, so it's it's kind of a big deal here. Um, it's actually somebody's grave. So I've talked about doing stuff like this before, never have, because I thought it was kind of weird. But today, I'm taking y'all to a cemetery. Yeah.
I have to admit, this had me sketched out for a second. So apparently we went the back way. Um, for all any of you that come to Paris and want to see this, go to the intersection. I'll put it right here. Evergreen and like Fifth Street, Southeast, something like that. But I'll put it right here for you. Don't follow the GPS because it marks it, but there's no entrance. And I wasn't really feeling like crawling underneath the wire fence. So uh, let's go check this out. Again, I've done some weird things, I admit. Uh, but this one, I, I heard about when I was out here back in 2020. Again, I'll put the link to that here when I was in Paris last. But uh, we never made it here. So I couldn't, couldn't come back without actually coming through here. So let's take a look. Yeah, so it's a thing. So apparently it's a grave of a uh, Willet Babcock. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Born October 6th, 1928. And then he passed August 27th, 1891. But this is the famous statue of Jesus wearing cowboy boots. Go ahead and zoom in here. You can kind of make it out. I feel kind of creepy walking on graves. Oh well, yeah. Definitely cowboy boots. And this is a very well-known tourist attraction here in Paris, Texas. Oh, so you tell me, what do you think? Different? Yeah? Definitely quirky, definitely unique. I hope you think it's kind of neat. I'm gonna take a couple snapshots here. Um, post a couple on um, Patreon and Instagram. Don't forget, like, if you like what I do here, please, you know, subscribe. That's the best way to support me for free. Smash that like button. But Patreon.com helps me continue to do a lot of these things um, and stay on the road and, and whatnot. And uh, if you go to Patreon.com forward slash Country Road Entertainment, down in the, uh, the description below, uh, there are some cool perks down there too. So... I'm gonna take a couple of these shots and then uh, I think we gotta start heading back to the camper. Tomorrow, hitting the road again. Um, believe it or not, heading back to Missouri and I'll explain why later. Well, howdy folks. Now, for those of you that have been following me for some time now, may remember this little bit here. This is the Eiffel Tower in Paris, Texas. Now, uh, two years ago, in roughly three weeks ago, um, I actually shot out here and flew my drone and everything. So you're gonna see in the tag right above, actually a link to that video. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. It was pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed actually filming it. But anyhow, I just figured I was in the area, uh, since I've been in Paris a couple days, figured I'd come back and pay homage to this really cool, uh, you know, monument that they have here next to the Veterans Memorial. So in case you don't know the history of it, now they, when they built that tower, um, Paris, Tennessee, if I recall, decided they wanted one too. But when they did that, that meant that they were slightly taller than the one here in Paris. And you know, that doesn't go sit well with folks from Texas. So they ordered that, right? If I can get in here, right there at the top, <laughs> uh, that cowboy hat. And uh, I forget the exact uh, difference it made, but that was enough to make them the tallest Eiffel Tower in the States. So I think it was like six foot or something like that, that it changed. But, uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's kind of quirky. I love this kind of stuff. And uh, back to the road. <laughs> My bad. I meant to close out the video before we left the Eiffel Tower. So uh, I'm getting ready right now. I'm securing the rig, uh, about to get everything hooked up. I'm leaving first thing in the morning. So I want to get an early start. Heading back to Springfield. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm going there, simple. There's a lot more to shoot that I didn't get to, so I can't wait to get there, and it'd be great to see some of my friends out there from the road. Uh, looking forward to seeing them. Uh, that being said, uh, love y'all, appreciate y'all. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, 
it, it's the best way, the freest way to support me, and it warms my heart. So, see you all next time.